SoFi's had an interesting past couple of days. On Tuesday, they announced a 750 million convertible note maturing in 2029, and the overall market reaction was drastically negative. The stock fell 15%, its single worst decline as a public company. However, after many digested that news, the stock has been steadily climbing again throughout the end of this week. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about this news along with all the other pieces of news that I've seen for SoFi this week. But before we start off with that, I just want to highlight that this is a series that I do weekly every Friday where I talk about SoFi news that I've been seeing through various different places. I've been doing it for a while now. I would suggest subscribing to keep in store with everything SoFi related over the future. The stock price action over the past couple days has been rocky to say the least. The stock opened on Monday at $9 a share and as a result of this $750 million offering, which came out on Tuesday pre-market, SoFi saw a drastic decline, about 15%. Currently, as of this recording, it's down about 15.5% over the past five days. Going chronologically through the news, on Monday before the bell, SoFi released news that Galileo had expanded their collaboration with the Bancorp to offer real-time payments through the clearinghouse. Essentially, Galileo had this previous relationship with Bancorp Bank that enabled real-time payment services. This delivered instant money movements between bank accounts. And what it did was it avoided these cash flow challenges that prevented some small businesses to get fast access to their money. The press release here highlights that the real-time payments are available any time of the day, year-round, ensuring the instant availability of funds even when traditional methods such as ACH and wire transfers are unavailable. In Q3 last year, the transaction volume of this network hit a record high of 64 million transactions at $34 billion. The press release continues to highlight the benefits that result from an expansion of this partnership, which are number one, faster transactions, of course, an enhancement in customer service, because now all of a sudden you have a faster speed and better convenience through these payments and eliminating all the delays in the process. And number three, superior cash flow management, right? Because all of a sudden these businesses can better manage their liquidity, they can better manage their working capital as a result of this partnership. I'm happy that they specifically called out the benefits to their small business users because this expansion and this partnership is gonna make it more accessible for Galileo to be plugged into small businesses and just makes it stickier overall. Later that night on Monday after the bell, Kathy Wood purchased an additional 782,000 shares of SoFi through ARCF. And I'm just going to summarize all the Kathy Wood purchases in one segment because she's bought every single day this week. On Tuesday, after the stock fell 15%, Kathy bought really heavily 1.9 million shares. On Wednesday, she bought 621,000 shares and another 725,000 shares on Thursday. She's added over 4 million shares of SoFi to her position over the past four days. This is a whopping number, especially because as of Thursday's purchase, her total shares aggregate across both funds are approaching 12 million shares of SoFi. And it does not seem as though she's stopping. It seems as though she's even accelerating some of her purchases across the different funds. If you aggregate both of her funds together, she owns about 1.2% of the entire company so far. So we're gonna see where that goes. We're gonna see if she bought more on Friday as well. Also on Tuesday, very important breaking news, uh, David Caverini of Wedbush reiterated his $3 price target. And you all know my thoughts on this, so I won't dive too much into it. Although I do regret to inform you that Mr. Caverini did unfortunately lose the half a star that yet remained, and he's down to zero stars now, according to tip ranks. Okay, so the reason why most of this stuff happened, you know, the Caverini reiterating the price target, the single worst decline in company history, and Kathy adding 1.9 million shares, all of this happened because by far the largest piece of news this week was this press release that was put out pre-market on Tuesday, which highlighted two major announcements. Now, the thing is that two of these announcements were released in the same PR, and this made it very confusing for people to distinguish between the numbers. And what I did was on Wednesday, I made a video breaking all of this down into a whiteboard format to visually explain what was happening, because I think that this piece of news, while misunderstood by much of the market, has a potential to be very positive for SoFi's business. Considering the fact that I have a 20 minute breakdown of this all drawn out on a whiteboard, I'm gonna try to be as brief as possible in this video. So the first piece of news is that SoFi is issuing 61.7 million shares to retire about $600 million worth of debt per the 2026 convertible notes. 
Now, the good news here is that they're no longer going to have this debt. The bad news here is that they're issuing more shares, which is obviously not great because if they issue more shares, it increases the amount of shares outstanding and dilutes the existing shareholders, right? You're essentially cutting more slices of that pie. And so everybody, as a result, gets slightly thinner slices. Now, the confusing part about this to me is that the debt on SoFi's balance sheet had 0% interest. They weren't paying any interest on this, so they had really no incentive to pay this off. I could be getting that wrong, um, but it sounds like this number one might have been something out of their hands. Essentially, the debt holders are uh, wanting that money back and so fast to find it somehow. Number two, it could just be the fact that they're restructuring some debt in general and this just fell into the mix. Uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit later on the SoFi Weekly podcast tonight. We're also going to have a special guest, so make sure that you don't miss that. Now, the second piece of news is where this gets a little interesting. Again, this is in the same press release released Tuesday morning before the bell. And this is with regards to the $750 million convertible notes that they offered maturing in 2029. Now, what you're thinking is, why is this good news? They're issuing more debt. They're borrowing more money. Well, one of the main reasons they're doing this is to pay off $325 million worth of existing debt at a 12.5% interest rate. Now, the new debt that they issued, they're going to be paying 1.25% interest. And so if you're thinking to yourself, like you have to pay off a credit card, your credit card charges you 12%, but you can get, let's say, a line of credit from the bank and they'll charge you 1.25%. It's a smart financial move to do that because you're avoiding a 12.5% interest payment on this side for your credit card, while now you have a loan that's 1.25%. And so what you pay in terms of interest is much less. SoFi is doing exactly that same thing. And in their case, this 12.5% equated to $40 million on their bottom line, on their EPS. And just for me to spell this out for people, keep in mind that SoFi's full year guidance for 2024 was 95 to $105 million in net income, seven cents to eight cents earnings per share. And the aggregate of all the analysts out there on the street actually have them coming in lower than this at six cents EPS for their estimates for 2024. So if SoFi fell between six cents and eight cents EPS, they could be in line with analyst estimates for the end of the year. Just this one move alone has allowed them to recoup half of their EPS for the entire year because they're not paying this 12.5% interest rate anymore. And we know SoFi is going to beat their numbers, by the way. But just think by how much they're going to beat their numbers when all analysts are expecting them to come in at six cents EPS and they just earned four cents EPS by not paying this interest, right? And the other thing to note is as soon as this deal closes, they're going to take off that debt. So that interest rate is going to be reflective as early as Q1 on their financials. And that's, I think, is really important because it sets SoFi up in a position where they're going to crush the bottom line estimates that they have for the full year 2024 just because of this move alone. They could come in at $150 million for net income because they just added another $40 million on top of that, right? Now, that's the first thing they have to understand that it's very positive on that sense because they just improve their cash flow, essentially. The second thing you have to understand is that these notes that they're issuing are convertible into shares. And immediately what should be going off in your mind is, wait a minute, Tevis, what about dilution? There's more shares that are going to be issued. Well, in the press release, SoFi highlighted that a portion of these proceeds, what they're getting the $750 million for, is going to go towards buying call options on their shares. So that if the stock price hits a certain point, the broker can just give them the shares due to their options contract, right? An options contract represents underlying shares. And what SoFi would do, instead of diluting or issuing new shares, they would just take those shares from the broker and they would turn around and they would exchange them for the convertible notes and give these shares to the institutions. So essentially, instead of cutting the pie into thinner slices, they're just taking a slice that the broker has aside of the freestanding float out there. And when you think of it like that, it's actually quite a savvy move because they've gotten rid of some high interest debt in the short term, which is going to help them for their profitability. And they're offsetting that dilution through these call options. So, OK, all of this sounds good. But why is the stock down so much? This was the single biggest decline in company history. Simply put, I think one of the reasons is that people just don't understand the level of financial engineering that this company is doing. Uh, they just see the top line number of saying, oh, SoFi is getting more debt on their balance sheet. Therefore, that's bad. And yeah, in face value, it is bad until you understand what they're using that money for, uh, which is leverage. Number two, I think one of the reasons, I mean, this is speculation on my part, but I think a good chunk of it has to do with the fact that the conversion price of when those notes convert into shares is based on what the stock price is today. So in other words, if the stock were trading at $9 a share, let's say, the conversion price might be $13 or $14. But since the stock price fell all the way down to $7, 
the conversion price is $9.54. And so if you think about it from that perspective, we're more likely to hit that conversion price because the shares are based on a smaller value. They're cheaper, essentially. And the reason why this is speculation is because it suggests that these institutions and the market makers have a large role to play in the short term fluctuations of the price. Well, if you ask me, they do. And until this deal actually formally closes, all parties are interested to keep this stock as low as possible so as to lock in that low conversion rate. However, after the deal closes next week and next month and beyond, the institutions would then be incentivized to buy SoFi stock to try to get that stock price up so as to hit that conversion price. Uber did this back in November of 2023, and since that time, the stock price has almost doubled in a few months. And I think a similar situation can transpire for SoFi because essentially through this move, SoFi has offered a big incentive to these Wall Street institutions to buy their stock, to promote their stock, and to essentially have a vested interest in the success of SoFi and the appreciation of their stock. And yes, some of you might not be interested in this because it's a Wall Street game, it's financial engineering, it doesn't really have much to do with the underlying business operation side of things. But the way I perceive it is that SoFi is letting Wall Street in to be a shareholder, to be some beneficiary of those shares appreciating, and as a result, to be a supporter of the company and the company's growth trajectory going forward. And all the while they're doing that, while removing some bad debt and adding $40 million to the bottom line, like I think this is a really great move, frankly. On Thursday, I saw news of SoFi having registered their second ABS securitization of 2024. The structuring lead for this one is Goldman. The structuring lead for the first one was JP Morgan. And between these two deals and the around 500 million that they're going to sell with their forward flow agreement, they're probably going to offload, according to Chris Hager, Data Driven Investing, over a billion dollars of personal loans again in the first quarter of 2024. So essentially in plain English, do you remember back in Q3 and Q4 when everybody was complaining that rates are so high and the Fed was unsure as to when they were going to cut and everybody was doom and gloom around, are we going to have a soft landing or are we going to have a hard landing? And SoFi is going to see massive defaults. The main concern was that SoFi was holding a lot of these loans on their books and not selling these loans. Well, right now, three months later, they're essentially packaging up these loans and taking them off their books. And this is great because number one, they make money off of this. And number two, they free up that space so that they can add more originations onto their balance sheet. And don't forget that in all years, like 2019, all the way through 2021, SoFi was offloading a lot of the debt off of their balance sheet, the loans that they held for sale, and they were making money off of that. And so business as usual for SoFi right now, we're going to be seeing the proceeds of those sales coming in for the business. And that is also positive, right? Because that was one of the biggest bear cases that we saw maybe five months ago, essentially, was people worried that they're not offloading as quickly or as much as they should be. And now SoFi is going to be offloading again. So if I had to wrap this video up, I think, you know, with regards to the convertible notes, SoFi management is adding immediate relief to the bottom line which will ensure that they beat their estimates. And at the same time, they're playing this Wall Street game. They're incentivizing these institutions to get bought into the growth story. And again, if you zoom out and look at the forest for the trees, the company is now profitable, partnered with the NBA, growing at a fast clip. There's so much going right for this company, fundamentally speaking. Do you think these institutions are really locking up $750 million for a 1.25% interest rate for the next 10 years? Think again, right? Absolutely not. They want to be in the stock and they want to be incentivized to do so. And they want to have a deal that incentivizes them to do so. And this deal is exactly that. I think once that deal closes, the stock price is going to follow that Uber playbook. Uber moved significantly higher in the months following that deal because these institutions were buying more of the underlying shares. I think we're going to blow through that strike price this year. And ultimately, as more time passes, I think this is going to be seen as a great move by management because it solves multiple problems for the company. It solves short term moves and it incentivizes Wall Street in the long term. And that's ultimately the reason why I bought another thousand shares this week, because I can have the ability to zoom out and say, OK, what is this going to do for us in several years, not necessarily in several days or weeks? But that's all the news that I saw this week. For right now, this is the Fundamentals Investing Podcast. Join us later tonight for the SoFi Weekly Podcast on this channel at 10 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much for listening.